Great. Well, here's a bit of a shift. Rice grown in Alberta could be on store shelves in the not too distant future. A rice growing project is underway in Lethbridge, Alberta, backed by an investment company specializing in agriculture, and it's showing great promise. Joining me now is Mike Gretzinger. He's research coordinator at Farming Smarter. I guess, Mike, when you tell people about this, how big of a surprise is it that rice is growing here in Alberta? Well, it's been a massive uh, surprise, and I think, you know, we've uh, put some of this information out there and everybody's pretty pretty fascinated by the fact that we're actually doing this. But uh, at Farming Smarter here, this is what we've been doing for a long time. Uh, we've been working with a lot of novel crops and so we've worked with Brassica carinata, uh, sunflowers, garlic, onions. Uh, there's a lot of work that we're doing with, uh, you know, Artemisia. We've tried uh, different things with hemp and quinoa as well. And, uh, you know, it's just really fascinating for us to try new things. And so, you know, we're at a stage where, you know, when something like this, an opportunity comes up where we can try a new crop, uh, we want to jump on that opportunity and, and see what can happen. Yeah, and I think part of the surprise comes in when I think of rice, I think of these massive rice paddies underwater, you know, and when we think about Alberta, we've been dealing with droughts when it comes to our farming. How is this sustainable in the Alberta weather? Well, absolutely. Those, that's a really good question. And so uh, this rice is specifically different than the paddy rice that I think most people are used to. This is called upland rice. And, and the whole idea is that we grow it under more conventional irrigation systems. And so we don't have to use a flooded paddy. And interestingly enough, a lot of people don't realize that uh, rice doesn't necessarily need that. In a lot of cases, it, it's part of their management because of their irrigation system and because of the, the weed management and harvest tools and, and agricultural tools that they have. And here in Southern Alberta, we've got a really unique region for growing crops called the Palliser Triangle. And you know, when we adopted farming here, you know, hundreds of years ago, it was, it was relatively unsuitable for agriculture. But because of our irrigation and, and development within that system, uh, we actually have a lot of opportunities that aren't necessarily available to other parts of the province and other parts of Western Canada. And so that's why we get a lot of these specialty crops here uh, within specifically within about 30 to 100 kilometers around Lethbridge where I'm at today. And so, you know, for, for us, we're growing this um, under a number of systems. Uh, one is uh, called subsurface drip irrigation. And so they actually put in uh, small hoses and, and basically rubber tubes underneath the ground or, uh, and they install them so that they have a slow dripping or a slow uh, seepage of water. And that's a really advanced technique for minimizing water losses. And we're also trying this just under a standard pivot where we just run circles over top and there's a lot of technologies to, to limit uh, the evapotranspiration and uh, a lot of advanced agricultural techniques there. Huh. So you've been using different varieties. Do I guess this is a dumb question, but do they taste the same? Is it basically the same as the rice we've been used to eating? Well, the idea behind this project isn't necessarily that this will be on, on shelves for consumers to eat. Um, I think there's there's a lot of promise um, for you know, maybe extracting and fractionating the end rice product. So, you know, rice is composed, the grain itself is composed of a number of different things. So there's starch and protein and oils within that, that rice grain. And so the starch might be used for whitening or smoothing processed foods. Uh, the protein is a good alternative to whey and it's got no fat, cholesterol or sugars. And then the oils can be used in different cooking products like rice oils. And so, you know, the, the rice that we're looking specifically um, you know, it, it's undetermined whether or not this is going to end up on a store shelf, but you can think of it something like, you know, the wine industry, there's regionality to all those flavors. And so I imagine, you know, if there was something ever done here in Southern Alberta, that there would probably be a, a niche to that where it's, it's very specific and regional to, to us here. Okay, and we don't have a lot of time, but I also want to ask you, I understand that Farming Smarter is also working on growing quinoa and hemp. How is that going? Well, the quinoa and hemp are definitely further along the road. So, so with rice, this is the very first year that we've done this. And that's why we dug these plants out just to show you beside that, you know, they are alive. They are actually growing. We're hoping to have some kernel development here soon and hopefully get a grain crop out of this. And so, you know, really first year is just to see if anything would work at all and if we could get a grain crop from it. And so it's already a success in our mind that that's happened. 
Uh, the rice and or the quinoa and the hemp crops are a lot further along. Hemp, hemp being the furthest, and we've been active in that industry for close to ten years now. Uh, so you know we've got a, a a big group of growers who are who are quite interested in that, and so we get into more advanced agronomy practices when it comes to things like hemp and quinoa. And we're working on seeding dates, seeding rates, fertility management, uh, looking at different herbicide options and uh, things like that. Uh, quinoa hasn't been as as big of an industry yet so far, and one of the challenges is just you know it, usually it, some of that comes from uh, the companies themselves, and so they're they want to make sure that they have buyers for the products, that they've got a whole market set up, and that you know farmers aren't bearing too much of the risk besides actually having to grow a new crop, and you know that's where farming smarter also helps just bridge those gaps of connecting the research with the farmers so that we can have a smooth process and in, in development of a lot of these new, new crops and new markets.